Welcome back to another episode of A Mental Health Break with Vincent A. Lancey. I'm excited to launch another episode for you all. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. When I was 21 years old, I was the victim of a hit and run accident while walking home from a friend's birthday. After coming out of a coma and suffering from a traumatic brain injury, or you may know of as a TBI, I soon realized that it was time to put my mental health on a very high pedestal. This transformative experience has led me to create a podcast that is all things mental health. Would it benefit you to hear from mental health professionals and influencers? Would it also add value to your life to hear real life and authentic stories from people talking about their mental health, the issues they face, and how they actively combat them? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you came to the right place. I want to start by congratulating you for making your mental health a priority. If you missed the last episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. On this episode, I am happy to introduce my guest, Tyrone Day. Ty was a referral from one of my earlier guests, and it is a man who traded in his trauma for a book bag, a yoga mat, and his testimony. I really wanted to interview Ty because of how much he can relate to everyone listening on who has dealt with a traumatic experience in their life. He is a dual degree graduate from Lincoln University and is a former senior aide to the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. Since then, he's transitioned into becoming a life coach, meditation practitioner, and a restorative yoga teacher where he is RYT 200 certified and the first black male yoga teacher from Newark, New Jersey. Allow me to please introduce Tyrone Day. Ty, thank you for coming on the show. Awesome, man. Thank you for having me, Vincent. I'm a pleasure to be here, man. You're a great spirit. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words. Would you mind please introducing yourself to our listeners a little more and share part of your story before we dive in and get going? Also, please share your role relating to mental health. Okay, awesome. Well, peace and light, everybody. My name is Ty Day. I'm born and raised in North New Jersey. And just a brief synopsis of my story, uh, I'm pretty much just trading my trauma for my testimony. In 2018, I went through a snowball effect of unfortunate events. Uh, I was six months unemployed. I lost a dear friend at age 30 through health reasons. I found out one of my family members uh, was diagnosed with cancer. And I was coming out of a toxic relationship. Everything all happened at once to the point I felt if a drive by or a stolen car came around, it was my time to die. I didn't know who to turn to. Uh, a lot of people left me at my lowest point. And I even left myself because I didn't even know who I was anymore. But then um, one of my friends said, You need therapy. And, you know, I, I didn't really think therapy was for me. I frowned upon it before because I was like, Oh, therapy not what I need. I need something else. But I took a leap of faith, went to a third party just to talk about myself and come to find out I didn't realize how much backed up trauma I had in my life outside of those unfortunate events. And that's where the real growth started happening. When I started taking acknowledgement and ownership for my own actions and things of that nature, come to find out uh, even though I was around people, places and things that was toxic, that was making me toxic. And I didn't realize how much that substance was coming on me. So that's when the first breakthrough happened. Um, just fast forward just a little bit. I came into my own when I started meditating and finding yoga and things of that nature, bringing me into the present moment. Uh, someone from my past came back and I felt like I was being tested and I failed because they ended up using me again, um, putting me in scenarios that I didn't know how to deal with because I was finally becoming vulnerable. I finally knew what emotions was. I took the mask down mm -hmm. and found out who I really was. And to be used like that, I felt it 10 times harder. But instead of converting back into those dark times, I actually stepped into my life and constantly continued, kept doing yoga, living in the present moment, praying to the higher power and realizing that nobody's outcome can determine my income as long as I sit there and pay my rent to, to him. So, now I'm here today to give my testimony to show that if anybody's fighting through behind closed doors, you're not alone. And I was just that person. Ty, thanks for sharing. On each episode, I share a mental health story of someone who is famous because I want to let you, the listeners, know you are not alone. I want you to understand that even though someone looks like they're healthy from the outside, they may not be on the inside too. Almost anyone who listens to music knows his name 
but not many know his story relating to mental health. I will now introduce the mental health related story of Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar is a rapper from Compton, California and is becoming a household name in music. Even though he has many accolades, Kendrick still faces a number of battles, including depression and what he would call his innermost demons. Kendrick opened up when talking about the song You on his 2015 album, To Pimp a Butterfly. He has very emotional quotes in this song, including, I know your secrets. I know depression is resting on your heart for two reasons. And if this bottle could talk, I cry myself to sleep. I found it interesting to read that the health conglomerate, Kaiser Permanent, they repurposed some of Kendrick's raps in an ad to encourage people to be more open on discussing their illnesses and to help break the stigma around it. Kaiser also said that nearly 15 million Americans suffer from depression, but many people do feel ashamed or embarrassed to go get the help they need because of the ongoing stigmas around mental health. Kaiser also added that this is particular in black communities where resources tend to be more limited. Ty, what did you take away from this story? Um, I actually can relate because um, I used to be in those spaces. I used to tell people that I've seen more caution tape than ribbon cuttings, that I've seen more funerals than weddings. So, I mean, when you're around that certain environment and that's what you see, I mean, that's what you're going to relate to. That's what you're going to write about. So if that's his way of expressing his peace, then, you know, that's just a formulation of his mental health is about writing his trauma through his music. And I think we don't realize that we're all in different scenarios. We all grew up differently. So mm -hmm. if me, someone that grew up in a neighborhood from the number streets where it was gang affiliated back in the nineties, I can relate because every time I get off the bus, I see a memorial or caution tape right on my block. So, or I see somebody that was slain on my block or I'm always reading a newspaper and that's what I, that's what I say. I'm like, damn, this is from my neighborhood. So, I absolutely understand where he was coming from, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to growth, you don't have to be that environment. You always have, you could always change the narrative and sit there and remove yourself from this equation. Yeah, would you, would you agree that there are so many people who don't speak on their mental health because of these stigmas still holding them back? Yes, I absolutely agree because at the end of the day, um, around my neighborhood or even just past times, we were raised to sit there and put up a mask. We were raised to sit there, especially men. We were especially raised, we were men, yes. Yeah, we were raised to be tough. We were raised to be strong. Anytime we showed uh, some type of emotion, it, it made us look weak. It made us look soft. And, you know, we've held so much trauma from that because we weren't supposed to show these type of emotions. But we didn't realize that was hurting us in the, in the later realm, right? Because our parents knew that our parents would have these generational sins. I'm not going to call them curses because mm -hmm. sins can always be forgiven. And the thing about it is, is that now it's our turn to change the narrative around saying, Oh, look, we don't have to be like that. You know what I mean? We don't have to live in that same uh, diameter or geodra uh, or demographics that our parents used to live in. Yep. And that's what we're sitting there trying to do now as we speak to them. Love it, man. I love the passion behind it. Um, let's get into the main event. On each episode, my guest and I will go over this series of six questions, which only slightly varies depending on if my guest is speaking on their own or others' mental health. And today we have a personal testimony. By doing this, it allows me to deliver as much value as possible to the listeners, give everybody a variety. So you ready to go? Let's go. Let's make it happen. Many would agree that the more common or at least talked about types of mental illnesses are mood disorders, anxiety disorders, or schizophrenia disorders. What areas did you come across the most? Um, I say more anxiety, uh, depression, uh, my moods always change because I didn't know how to handle them. I didn't mm -hmm. actually even know I had that until I went to therapy. Like right. it was to the point that I didn't know I was suffering from it. I was trying to diagnose myself, which that was very invalid. So, um, I used to come stressed from work. I used to come to arguments back home with my past relationship. Mm -hmm. Like I was always drained. Like I think I was too empathetic to the point that I was always running on fumes when I came home. And by that time, I didn't really realize I was suffering from depression, anxiety, stress. And it didn't come until I found out what was really wrong with me. And I think, but a lot of us are going through that because we don't have that third party to say, look, we need help. And I think that just comes from like we talked about with the correlation of how we were raised. So yeah, personally, that's the things that I was going through. 
Yeah, I'm very similar in the point where I put off therapy for a long time saying it's not for me, you know, it's not manly, it's not something that's going to really help me. And then once I did it, I was like, oh, all right, like this, this is something that I could work with. <laughs> You're right. Absolutely. Unfortunately, right? <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you got to try something to see if it's for you. And then once you realize all the benefits it provides, you just continue it. But when did you first decide, can you describe this moment for us, Ty, where you said, I'm going to start taking a stance on mental health stigmas. I'm going to start making a difference that way. Um, I took this stance, uh, I would say sometime, I would say early 2019, when I started finding myself and realizing that, wow, uh, when I ended up into the school system in North Public Schools, I found out that we're so thinking that adults are going through this, our, our future leaders of tomorrow are going through this, just because they didn't live in the time that we did, because we thinking that, okay, well, we wasn't around technology a lot like that. You know, social media bullying and all these right. things of this nature just started transpiring. But they're going through it way worse. Some of these students are homeless. Some of these students are living in toxic households. Some of these students don't have yep. a, a lifeline to go to because they're so private with their emotions or they don't feel like being judged or bullied or somebody questioned them. So... I decided to take a stand of being a life coach, being a meditation practitioner, and bringing it into these schools. In addition, with helping people in my community with having different um, conversations like Cry Like a Man or Mental Health Mondays and stuff like that. And I feel like these are helping people because a lot of testimonies are coming from us. I love how you're involved with the school districts. I think that's something very important to shaping tomorrow's youth. Describe one of your favorite moments interacting with these kids for us. I know when I'm at the schools, I really enjoy these kids. You know, my favorite thing is when I have these kids come hug me or give me a handshake when they're so young. And, you know, you can't get through to everybody when you're speaking. It's just not the way it works. But when you have those few people that actually take something from it, it's a good feeling to know you got through to them. So I'm just curious. Oh, man. It, so when uh it's so funny my students found me on social media i was like oh jesus christmas now i got my students following me uh mm -hmm. and they so they see i do a lot of meditation they was like they always say mr day why are you so calm peaceful i was like because i meditate and you know i try to just channel my energy and work on my inner self so it's so funny like probably at lunchtime or on their free period they always running me like mr day mr day this girl tried me or I feel like I'm about to fight. I need to come to your office and meditate. I just started laughing yeah. out of the blue. But then when we go to my office, you know, I, I, I offer them a guided meditation. And then after that, the, the responses that come from that, like, Mr. Day, I greatly appreciate it. Like, I look at things differently now. And right. it just shows how one person can make a difference in the school system. And I think that's great advice for everybody listening on. Just do your part. If you're thinking about doing it, just do it because you never know how far it can go for someone who's having a bad day. But Ty, what advice can you give to our listeners as what may be considered a potential early sign that they might be starting to develop some kind of mental illness from your experiences? What value can you add here? Ooh, uh, one big value is know your triggers. And uh, when you have that gut feeling about something, please go with your gut. Do not deny that feeling. And then not only just that, we gotta stop learning how to save people. We gotta learn how to sit there and help them. You Don't save nobody. You should be able to give the tools and everything that they need so they can save themselves. Because what you're doing, like I, just like I put in one of my poems, I'd rather be around faucets and not drains. People will drain you. You need people to purify you, nutri like sit there and give you the proper nutrients for you to go. As soon as you start feeling that you're about to be drained, you need to remove yourself from that equation and refill and pour back into your own cup. That is very, very important because what is going to end up happening, you're going to build up trauma. You're going to end up starting having triggers that you didn't even realize that you had. Yep. And that's taken away from your inner peace. So I would say as soon as you feel it in your gut, question it. Think about it, process it, and then you need to release and move on. Couldn't agree with you more. You know, there's a lot of sayings, but it goes like, you have to help yourself before you can help other people. You got to make sure you're yeah. in the right space before you do that. But Ty, if you could pick only three, and I say just three, because I want the three most important things our listeners can do on a daily or short-term basis to start improving on their mental health, what can you give us? Meditate, shadow work, pray. Let's talk about them. Oh, man. Meditation. Meditation is really uh, 
uh, sitting there going into the present moment. The way I sit there, you, um, I don't know if you, Vincent, like when you come into your place, I don't know if you leave the sh your shoes at the door, your slippers at the door because you don't want to track up different stuff. I also tell people to leave their mind at the door so new information like to be that. able to come in. You don't want to sit there and dirty up your place with the outside and your windows that you came in with from society. So okay. meditation brings you within that present moment of not worrying about everything else. So you can sit there and work on your inner peace. Another thing is pray. Um, pray. I wouldn't be anywhere without prayer. My fear ended up turning to my faith. Uh, I stopped claiming a victim and started claiming my victory. And the thing about it was it all became for me walking by faith and not by sight, taking that trip into the unknown. So this is, these are two components that I live with freely. I think the last one, shadow work is very hard, very hard, and it can scare you. Because the thing about it is you're going in a place that you never went and that's within. You're seeing everything that you don't want to see. You, you're going to sit there and cry. You're going to be pissed off. You're going to get frustrated. But at the end of the day, is that mirror work. When you wake up, the first person you talk to is yourself. Do you love yourself? If you, love, if you can't love yourself, how can you love somebody else? If you're not whole, how can you be whole with somebody else? So that shadow work by being by yourself is very important. But you'll find light in the darkness when you do that. I know yoga right now for me is a, a good component to do because we don't realize how much, uh, you know how you just go to the court or you're going out, you just do them small stretches, everything like that. We don't realize how much we're not helping our bodies. Uh, yoga for me, especially men out there, I need y'all to realize that um, when we get older, we have these back spasms or we end up having these hip because we're not doing the proper stretching, we're not doing the proper thing. And, we, and what those do when it comes down to yoga, it actually helps you also to bring you in the present moment when it comes down to that. So now we got to go a little longer here. Those are great initiatives. I know everybody's going to tackle right away if they're not doing so already. What are two long-term commitments our listener can make to start creating a healthier mindset with? Um, commit. Uh, I think just commit go. to change. Uh, that's, you have to realize that you have a problem, and that's okay. When you can acknowledge that you have a problem, and it doesn't have to be something that's um, inflicted on, something, on somebody else. It can be self-inflicted. And the thing about it is the term self is very important. And I think we really need to sit there and channel that. Committing to change is very important because we can procrastinate. I say our bodies are like computers, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody don't understand that computers came from a human mind. So when you hear words like shut down, refresh, reboot, update, we think that's coming from a computer, but that's also with us. Sometimes we need to shut down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to refresh. Sometimes we need to update. And all those tabs... You know what I'm talking about, Vince. You know them tabs that you all have. Like, I got to get to this. Get it. Sometimes those can be distractions, right? Those pop right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the thing about it is we need to sometimes X those out and worry about the, the homework assignment that we need to be worrying about, which is us. So that's, uh, that's the primary thing I would say uh, that you need to do. And the other thing is um, I would say communication. Communication is very important because – uh, the, the biggest uh, relationship fail when it comes down to friendship, relationship, families, is communication. We don't communicate. We don't speak to one another like we're supposed to. The proper dialogue. Everything doesn't have to be an argument. It can be just proper dialogue. What yep. I tell people now, I'd rather be real than nice. The reason why I say that, because nice people always whisper sweet things into your ear, but real is always going to sit there and let you know what's going on and sit there and have you work on yourself. Couldn't say it better. I'd rather have people around me who are going to tell me an honest, some, an honest statement than have something else going around. But you're doing a lot right now, Ty, as far as getting involved, making a difference in your communities. What are some ways you're going to continue to plan on raising mental health in the future for all this importance? What do you got going on? Um, I'm actually going to start uh, my yoga and meditation when human interaction starts up. Um, I have a studio out in North New Jersey that I'm going to be doing yoga and meditation at for the community. I'm also trying to bring yoga and meditation to schools and also Mental Health Mondays. I also do things called virtual check-ins that we probably, there are a lot of people right now that think that they are not loved or they don't have nobody that appreciates them. So I decided to find a problem and turn it into a solution by creating virtual check-ins for people as well. 
do you have that as just what kind of scale are we looking at with that right now or what's your goal with the two it's actually growing because i've been doing it on social media through zoom and ig live so i'm thinking after human interaction say for example if you can't make a class i'll have like the, uh, my, a zoom up or ig live up so you don't miss what's going on i have been reaching out just not only people from New Jersey, but I have people from LA, Milwaukee, Portland, Oregon, Miami. That's awesome. Kansas. So a lot of, we, we even had Toronto, Haiti, Barbados, they even tuned in. And this just shows that how one person can find a formula and turn it into a solution. You're saying a lot of great stuff on here today, Ty. Thank you so much for coming on our show. I know the listeners are going to see all the value in your show. I love how you kept it real right from the beginning. Honesty is everything that's going to directly translate you spoke about such great initiatives for your short-term mental health, and I say they're great because you experience them. Those are things that you do on a regular basis and believe in, and I really like that you're getting nationwide here, even international with checking in on people because the valuable lesson of it only takes one person that to you know, improve their day. You did it, man. But it's time for the last word. Is there something that you want to share with our listeners that we did not get to touch on yet today? Um, I think that the listeners just need to sit there and remember that you are enough. Mm -hmm. You matter. Yep. If anybody decides to judge you, then they need to judge themselves because you are way more important to this world than you think you are. Mm -hmm. Stop belittling yourself. Be kind to yourself. And you always remember, just take that leap of faith into the unknown because you already know what backward looks like. And if you fall, it's okay. Just fall forward. <laughs> Great way to put it. And Ty, would you mind please sharing your social media that you use for your professional activities, your websites, whatever you got going on for our listeners to follow your endeavors? No problem. Um, right now, I'm IG based. At the point, I'm still working on my website after I pass my next exam. Uh, it's I A M T Y D A Y E. Uh, my business page is King's Motivation Project, all the way spelled out King's Motivation and Project. So, those are the two ways that you can reach out to me. Um, rather you want to do yoga, you want to do meditation, or you need me to come speak to any of your students or the youth, that's the best way to reach me. I appreciate you sharing all that. And be sure to check out those Instagrams and reach out to him. But it's social media time, and the show is on whichever platforms you like to use. We're at A Mental Health Break on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. And we're on Twitter at Podcast by Lancey, so you get updates from this show and what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. Of course, my handles are at Vincent A. Lancy on all social media and YouTube, and my website is vincentalancy.com. If you check out my books, DM me. I want to hear from you. We have Left for Dead, a story of redemption, and how to transform your mindset when the norm has changed. Both are on Amazon. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rate A Mental Health Break with Vincent A. Lancy five stars. I work hard to find value-delivering guests for you on each episode. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all on the next episode of A Mental Health Break with Vincent A. Lancey.